Hello and good day to you. Today's video, we are demonstrating the use of the Clip Studio Paint Text Tool in designing an open face and beveled typography effect on a poster or book cover. Open the Clip Studio Paint software. I'm using version EX of the software. If you want to create a new file, click on File, New, and decide the last file. You can type the file name here or later, you can do that. With the unit of measurement, the resolution, the width and the height of the image, the document you, cr you are creating, the paper color, you can choose it. You can decide which color here, but I've already created an image. So I'll just talk, I'll open that image. So if you have created an image and you want to, I've created what I need for the book cover. So I'm just going to click on file, open, and it take me to the folder. So I'm going to open two images. I'll open this one first and I'll open the second one. I'll talk through both of them. So let's talk about the first one we had derived the image from. I used, um, just going to open the background and release the background so that I can. So to release the background and right click on the two palette, activate the background layer, right click on the two palette, layer setting, and then click on lock layer so that it unchecks and the background will be released click on the operation to and i'll just move the slide the background to the right so that you see if you notice the images look alike because this vector shape image was derived from this uh, pose and to get the pose click on windows scroll down to material and then go to material pose click on it a window appears and then you can choose whatever pose you desire so this pose is of um, someone drinking tea so i just want to show you Okay, yes, drinking coffee. Here it is. So it's, you just click on it and drag it to the work surface. And then what I did was, what I did was use vector shapes to cover it and uh, try to form my image from there. So you can do same. Although I still export i exported it to another you can do it in clip studio paint or you can export it into another program graphic software where you can make the alteration so i did them um, vector shapes you can see the each shapes they are in vector so after that 
so that's that i'm not going to, to save it so i formed this image and this nice scenery using vector shape but because it's saved in PD, psd i did the work on um, in another software graphic software and because i saved it in as P, exported it as psd back into clip studio paints for this project i have to now work on it and if you want to uh, make it edit the each layer editable i'm just going to activate the i'm going to activate the small pond here and it's it's already rasterized because it was exported because it was um, it saved in mpsm so to make to turn it into a vector you right click and you click on convert layer convert layer click on it and here a window appears tells you can name the layer then the type of layer you want to convert it to you can now go and say click on vector blend mode normal color is color expression color is color and then you click ok it's going to create a new layer vector layer and that's this black lined or line over it then you can if you want to you can click into it and then color it to the it's now a vector layer which you can edit so i'm going to say select the select this black line says select select but if you want to you can go within correct line or node 2 go to the sub 2 palette take control points and in the two property you can choose to move add control and then it will be it is going to be editable you can also simplify it so uh, if i want to i can just click on the simplify take a smaller size brush or large size brush make sure the vector point layer that's activated and because it knows so much and you just go over it and see if it simplifies it and you can use the control point again to see if you notice before the notes were much like if we say we have to go to undo and i click on it you will see that the notes are much the notes are much here but after we simplify the vector line which i'm going to say edit redo you see that it's now um, the notes are few this you can work with than the previous one when it was um too dense too much nodes you can also continue simplifying it and if you desire you can delete whatever node you want and then you can build it back into um vector shapes because we did it in psd so let's start working on our pro now that we've um how i got the image how i derived the image and how i built the scene the scenery i'm just going to If I want to, let me just color this one in. Take a large brush. And I'm just going to color that one in. Select, select. I was just coloring the vector layer in. So, um, what I'm going to do now is to add a new layer, a new raster layer get the brush to watercolor brush too and for this i'll use my graphics tablet and its stylus if you want to you can use any um, you can use the mouse if you are good with the mouse to paint i'm just going to paint sky and um and i use um, sky so um watercolor brush selected and transparent watercolor in the soft to palette then I'm going to select a blue for the so here I'm just going to paint and you can resize your brush the way you want you you can make the brush larger Now make the upper part darker.
Select the blend tool. Select the blend tool and I'll go with a large size blend tool because I want to be fast and I'll just blend it in. And towards the end, where the horizon is going to be, I'm going to make sure it's a bit light, fading into as if white. So this is where my horizon is going to be and I'm just going to put it like so. I'll add a new layer. We'll move all these layers to the back. Just want to work with it first. So this new layer, I'll go for, let me look for, for a brown here. And with a watercolor brush again, in this new layer, I'm going to paint the brown. With the blend tool, in the sub tool palette of the blend tool, I'm using blend and I just take a large size and towards the horizon, I'm just going to make sure it's pale. I'm just going to make this simple. If we want to add other parts, we can add different um, effect that we want to for the but to make it fast because i'm not demons really demonstrating this i just want to put something at the back of this image for us to create it so activate the make sure the make sure the sand layer uh, is activated or the brown layer is activated select the selection tool from the top of the from the top of the document drag it to where you want the horizon to be and press delete and we'll have a very straight line for our horizon then click on select and deselect so we're going to move this background to the back Just going to drag it. Oh, I, I went to place it in the folder. No, no, no. Oh, I've placed it in another folder. <laughs> Just going to. So I'll drag the. I'll do I'll do same for the land or the brown layer. I'll just move it to the back. Instead of doing that, you can just work from the back. You can just activate the back layer, the bottom layer, or the background layer, add the layer to add a new raster layer and paint from it. So now we have a nice uh okay, so the Landscape has to come in front because it's where the, we trim the horizon from so that we have the clean image. If not, if we put the sky above it, we're going to have, we can leave it like that. It's still nice. We still have our horizon there and it's as if the sky is fading into. I think that that's nice. But if you want a clear dem demarcation, the brown goes up above the sky layer. So I'll just leave it like that. Working above all layers of text, I'm going to add a new raster layer just for demarcation. It's not necessary because the font is going to be in the um, vector. So select the text tool, click on the work surface. I'm going to change the color to black for so that we see what we are doing. And I'm going to call this cap, caps lock on. 
I'm going to call this Reminence of a Crafter. This is a series that I'm working on. I'm already in season two of the series. It's just crafting tales and different things that are happening. So I've just um, leave this one first. We'll zoom into it and see how, see the word. Remnants of a crafter. Select it. So let me zoom in so that you see what I'm doing. Because the font is kind of, the image, the size is small. So select it, drag the mouse over it or the cursor over it to select it. Here you can change the color. So the first, then click the pen to click the pen editing tool of the text of the text. That's this pen here. Click on it, and we're going to and the window appears. Sub to detail, and we'll start working with that. If we want, we can change the full font, but we'll take this one after the other. So I'll just take the first, I'll first of all take the remnants of uh, of A so that we work with that one first. Click on open face and click on open face bold. If you take a look at it, it said anti aliasing on, we are going to tell it off to put it off. We don't want it on. Then that's in the two property we remove the anti-aliasing so here we can change the font i'm going to change the font for this i think i like this font for this one so i'm going to leave that font then for the crafter I'm going to select only the crafter and I will increase the size. I'll make it bold. So I've increased the size to about 38 point. Let me make it 40.2 or so. 40. And if you notice, it's only the, I didn't increase the remnants of A. I only increased the size of the crafter. Because I selected the crafter and made the alteration on that. You can make the horizontal ratio, you can make it wide, and the vertical ratio, you can make it grow upward. You can edit any other information you want to edit here, but this time you won't tick open face because we want the we want the text to be in fill. Open face will create a line art, but we want the text in fill. When you are happy with Okay, then we change the font. I want to change the font of this. So I'm going to change the font to Accord Heavy. Then I'll click. Then click on the check to or tick to. And here we have our text. But we are not finished yet. You can still resize it here, but if I want to, I'll check on it select the text tool again and this time i'm going to make sure it almost covers the page go for the editing and we're going to increase the size oh now i've made a mistake of um okay i can still work on that so I've increased the size. Just to make it large. I'll select then select only the increase the size if you desire. Then go back again. You have to repeat all process. You select only the crafter and increase the size of the crafter. This time don't select the remnants. We just want to increase the size of the crafter. Click on it and we arrange it to see if it fits the page properly. Okay, that's fine. We'll select the crafter again. And we've, we'll just select the crafter again and make any alteration we want to make, like the vertical ratio. 
I want it to be very large. So I'm going to make sure it's really bold. So the vertical ratio is about 187. And then you click, you check, click the check tool. So here we have our text as we desire it to be. On the layer palette, you right click and duplicate. We'll close the original layer because we want to work with this copy layer. If you just, if you select the remnants and you click delete, it's going to make the crafter move. So because of that, we are not going to do that. We'll leave it because there are different um, effects. So it's going to make the crafter move. We don't need to do that this time. We want the crafter to be there. I want to do some editing. There too. So we're going to leave this one and we're going to work on it. So you can write or duplicate it three times so we duplicate it three times or let me just say we duplicate it twice and we're going to change the color then we can make the effect so select only the crafter and we'll change the color first before we, we, we need to rasterize. Then go into the editing, sort to detail and edit it. I'll take for this first one, just click into the, just take the eyedropper tool and click into the close to the text, get the light blue, the sky blue in that area that is going to be on the work surface then you click on ok it's filled with a different color and if you zoom closely you will see that it's faint it's as if it's fading into the sky we need to activate the second layer so i'll close this first layer and this second layer will the second text layer select only the crafter tool into the color palette and then select a color of choice if you select the same blue sky blue that you used previously and this time just drag the slider to a darker shade and click on ok so if we close this upper layer you will see that uh, oh i'm I use the wrong layer. Okay. If you close the upper layer, you will see that it's filled with a diff with the color. So now we are happy with it. Let's start the alteration. So I open the first layer. And this first sky blue layer, activate it, right click on the layer palette and click on rasterize. Then go to filter blur gaussian blur you can increase the size of the gaussian blur until you desire the effect we just want it to pop a little out of the page to give that bevel effect so you don't need to add too much blur so i'm going to make the blur about 18 let me see if it's going to Okay, so I've made it about 34.86 just to see if I like it. And yeah, I'm happy with it. So if you look, you will notice that this reminence is a, the reminence for the, on this layer is as it's, it affected it too. Because it's a raster layer, get the eraser tool. You can do that before. You can do that after. I didn't do it before so that I don't, I don't uh, make you divert a little. 
So take the eraser to a large brush size and on this rasterized layer of the sky blue text, you can erase just the remnants of A. We'll go into the second layer. The that's the uh, this um, dark blue layer. Right click on it and rasterize. Get the eraser tool too, and then you erase the remnants of. Uh, so this third layer that is black, you can leave it if you want to. But I'm going to edit the remnants of A. So I'll select only the remnants of A. Go into the editing tool. Select the color. And go for my color history and use the dark color that I used for the text. And then click on OK. If you select the... If you delete the crafters, it's going to affect your work. So if I say I should open it, you see it's moved. We don't want it because they are of different effects. So we're not going to delete the crafter. Instead, we'll leave it and we can, if you want to, you can just select the crafter, edit it and pick the sky blue close to it. The use the eyedropper tool to select a sky blue color and fill only the crafts out the sky blue color. Then you won't see it appearing in your work. So just open it. And here we have our text fonts. So we've used the open face, we've used, so we've used the open face, we've used, we've beveled the text for this, for our book cover. Also, I would like to add my name. Tap lock on. And I'll select it and edit it to a color of choice. I'll just pick a dark color or I'll pick a, I'll pick white because I want to put it at the base here. So I'll pick white, select it. Okay. Font. So select, see selected. I'm going to go for a card heavy and I can decide the size to just, don't want it to be, just want it. Let's see. Okay. So when we are happy with it, we click on OK. And with the operation two selected, in the sub to palette of the operation object is selected, we move the name to where we want it to be. So I'm just going to open one that I, so that you have done a lot on all these um, on tags for the series that I'm this um, crafting tales. Okay, there's something I want to write. I forgot that. I'll just add it up here because I've taken too much of the space and I don't want to start all over again. So in the two palettes. In the layer palette, I will get the text to, and we're just going to put it on the, and I will say with a hashtag, let me select white color first. I want the color to be white so that you see it. Okay. So I'll select, I'll say hashtag. Crafting tails. And then we can edit it. 
the size we just want it a bit okay you select it select this uh, font forgot to do that drag the cursor to select it so that you'll be able to edit the font click on the editing tool i'll leave this font this tahoma then i'll increase the size a little happy with it click on the check tool click on operation tool to arrange your text to where we want it to be so i'll just put it somewhere here so here is a nice book cover using the font for with an open face and and bare view to create a bare view and just a plain text I'm going to show you one the ones I've created using the same material using the material pose. I'm going to say file open. And I'm going to click on this to to open them. Okay, this is th this particular one. It was on episode seven of it. Um, we used the same image. It's the same image we used, but we resize the clothing differently. Instead of um, a trouser, it, uh, the lady is going on a gown also there, and we built uh, the magnolia tree and the others there. We just made a text plain here. So this one, we if the material pose we used, like the one the previous one, you know, we used the the same uh, pose, but this particular one we used another pose, and that pose, let me get it. Let me see if I have um, if I started it. Okay, I think that's it. For this particular one, this um where 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 I forgive myself, uh, I'm just going to get the and you can see is the material pose is what we used here. So I bring it to the front so that you see it properly. So the matter you can see the it's what we used from the material palette as I said earlier windows oh, sorry window <laughs> window um, material and material pose we got it from this one well 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 hope I can quickly find it for you so you can change the you can change the pose to what you did after taking the pose you can change it to what you desire for the t i just move the hands and dazzle and i think i cross the legs <laughs>
okay here it is so we'll just bring it in so here is it is the same you can see that it's the same um You can see that it's the same. So you can resize, you can resize it. You can move the hands, and you can alter it. You can move the hands the way you want it to be. So that was ha what I did for the poem, for this one, this book cover. I moved the hand instead of the tea, holding a teacup. Move the hand to touch the hair, and the other hand is on the rock. So you can play around with them and he, over here i've done same i've just left this without moving the hands i just built my image over it so i just built the image over it using vector shapes So let's save our work. Click on File, Save As. We can save as. We can save in Clip Studio format, and we can save as. Um, so I'll save this as clips in Clip Studio format. And you can also save in PSD, save in PSD. So I'll click on file, save as, and put it as some PSD, Photoshop document. With that, I'll be able to open it in any graphic software, although it will be rasterized, but I can still work with it. So I'll just click on save. And because of the text, some of the text are seen in vector format. That's why it's saying, it's giving me this um, prompt. And I'll say yes. So I can still go to file, export. If you want to export it as JPEG, resize it, that's fine. So I can leave it as JPEG. I'll just leave it and say save type is as JPEG. And here, if we want to resize the Specify the resolution. The resolution is already in 300 and the size, I think the height is about 8.8 .8 by 8 inches in size. If we want to resize it, we can resize the resolution here. We can make it smaller. We can make it bigger here. But I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave it at 300. Just type it in. Then the file size, you can resize it here if you want. Just click on the slider and move it. And it will resize it. Make this file size small. So I'll leave it at 100. And then click on OK. So thanks for joining me for this video of using the text tool in Clip Studio Paint to create a line art and beveled typography effect for a book cover. Until next time, happy crafting, happy designing, and bye for now.